It's me that's creeping through the bag with the black on black, the soldier with the Mac. I bust back till he crack. I got the chop in my hand with the clip in the ass. It go to spitting and make a movie, so you better get back. You see, ride at night, bullets fly at night. Uh, Rashid Salahuddin, aka Mr. Super Fantastic. This is an I Got Flow production interview with none other than Delvin Bro. And so, Mr. Bro, how you making out today, sir? Oh, man, I'm doing wonderful. How you doing? Oh, man, I'm super fantastic, man. So, um, I realized that you're from New Orleans, man. Um, and growing up in New Orleans, man, what was life, life like as a kid, man? <laughs> oh, man, life was, you know, life was crazy, man. Um, you know, just growing up in poverty and having to, you know, make it, man. You know, like they say, once you survive and make it out, man, you you good. You know, once you make it out of New Orleans, stay out of New Orleans. So it was basically like a survival of the fittest, man. Um, when you have, you know, at least 10 people living in your house and people just coming in and out your projects, man, it's, it's crazy. Plus, I was standing in Abbeville, uh, right across the street from the cemetery, man. So waking up every day, having to see that for, for years, bro, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's crazy, man. So it's just survival of the fittest. Ten people at the house. You got siblings? Yeah, man. It was <laughs> yeah, man. It was crazy. I had um, it was my mom, it was my aunt, and uh, her two kids. It was my mom and me and her, her three kids, and it was my uh, other cousins and uh, my uncles were staying there. So it was it was crazy. Were you aware that you were living in poverty, or you you really you really didn't, didn't really notice it? Or no, nah, man. Not as a kid. You know that's that's normal, right? You like we think it's normal being around family. Like we thought it was you know it was normal, right? We didn't think nothing of it until, you know, we started growing up and we started seeing more of the outskirts of New Orleans. Like, man, we, 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 we supposed to, you know, be living with all these people in the damn house. But, you know, it was cool. Right. All right. So I do notice, I, re I remember reading that uh, as a child, you had some of a rough upbringing and you actually, um, you know, attempted suicide at one point. Could you expound on that? Oh, yeah, man. Um, you know, that's a rough, 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 dark side in my life, you know, um, as a childhood, just just enduring pain and, and abuse from, um, you know, from my dad. And, you know, it, 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 it was more so of, of tough love in his eyes, you know, and that was the older generation. Right. It's something now that I'm understanding that, man, that's all they knew. Right. Like that's how they were raised and that's all they knew. But me as a kid now looking at it like, man, you, you could have done better. Like, I man, you don't have to have your child fearful and scared of you 25 years down the damn line like bruh you having trauma and all that you feel me so as a kid at nine years old you damn right I was trying to take my life man because it was right after I was trying to um it was right after I was I got beat with a bat um because I didn't know the 50 states of America bruh it's freaking crazy man um and 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 like I you know I was going through these dark spaces and I was looking in the mirror and I was just asking God like why like why me man and um I was just crying and shit and you know I was just like 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 man I, I i i gotta go so i went in my dad's closet and uh, they were gone right everybody was gone that's how crazy it, it was everybody was gone and uh i went in my dad's closet grabbed a gun and i like i was holding it and like i was like man like, i was like yep yeah, it's time and like i'm i'm playing with it I, like i didn't know how to use it i didn't know you know what what the safe the safety was on or not but i was holding it and then next thing you know they had uh, my dad pulled in the driveway and then that's when I put the gun back, went in my uh, room and got back on my knees because that's what I was supposed to be doing. So it's crazy. Wow. Wow. Man, that's a serious situation, man. Um, did that help you as a child? Did football, was that like a release for you? Man, yes. 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 When I started playing at Harrell, man, uh, I made my first tackle and you could just see the excitement on my dad's face. And to me, that was like you know, relief. That was relief of anger, relief of a lot of energy and pressure that I had, you know, built up and seen, you know, all the trauma that I've seen. And man, I, I, I loved it from then on. That was my passion. That's all I wanted to do was make plays and, uh, and, and I love football. How old were you? What grade were you when you first started playing? Uh, I was about, I was introduced at four or five years old, man. So I was a young pup, man. <laughs> man, that's exciting, man. Uh, I read that, uh, so you, you went to McDonald 35 High School, correct? Mm -hmm. How was that experience? Were the coaches pretty cool? Or did they help you out a lot? 
Oh, man, it was great, man. Um, uh, rest in peace to our head coach, uh, Wayne Reese. He uh, passed away uh, to COVID. Um, so rest in peace uh, to him and uh, shout out to Al Reese and the family. Um, you know, it, 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 it was all love. Um, and one thing that stuck with me with, with my coaches, like you said, that, that they helped. Um, I saw an instance to where he was pulling and coming in practice and I saw a coach, uh, you know, trashing everything on the ground and Mind you not, everybody, you see trash, you just pass it up. Like, oh, this is trash. But he stopped, picked it up, put it in the trash. People don't do that. Wow. Normal people don't just sit up there and do that. They look at trash on the ground and be like, all right, whatever. But he stopped and did that. And to me, that, that touched me. I'm like, man, he didn't have to do that. Because, and nobody was around. Nobody saw him. Right. I was pulling in, and I'm like, bro, nobody saw him do that. I said, man, that right there stuck with me. And just the way uh, him putting smiles on people's faces and the players always gravitated towards him, man. Like, he treated everybody as if we were his own kid. Like, bro, hey, man, listen to me. Football is not even – you can't even say Wayne Reese in football. You say father figure. You say, you know, uh, a man, you know, somebody who took care of the community, man. Uh, football was just, you know, a, a platform for him to do that. So I'm, I'm thankful for him for being in our life. That's awesome, man. Um, what are some things that you did as a kid that separated you from the competition? So all oh. kids <laughs> assume they're going to make it to the NFL. So what were you doing at 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 that, uh, let you stand out like man, that. Man, that tough love, man, it was tough love and football, man. That's it, right? And working out and training, man. That's all my dad. My dad had us, like, we were pulling tires. Bro, we was outside having ropes and tires. <laughs> you know, we pulling tires up the street on Arthur Drive, man. We out there pulling tires. We running levees, hills. Like, my dad, it was like my dad was living through us. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. he, he didn't get as far, but he wanted to make sure we get far. And, like, his, his saying was, I'm going to get my money early. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because we're going to make it. And, he, you know, we right. expect to give him money. But, man, you got to think, that's what you're supposed to do as a parent. You're supposed to want to see your kid be successful and not want anything back. You want to see them be happy. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. All right. So, uh, at McDonald 35, you are a standout play it, um, you know, scouts would come and check you out. Um, and then so when you uh, had the accident, um, how'd that all come about? I watched a video where that they showed you running, was on special team play? Oh, uh, yep. And so could you talk about that a little? Oh, uh, yeah, man. Um, so yeah, it was coming down, uh, it was was just coming out of halftime. And, um, you know, I'm gonna just explain the whole thing because uh, it's exciting. So my coach is like, man, we somebody gotta make a play. All right, we gotta make a play. It was playing against Jesuit High School. We we never beat a Catholic school in, in a long time. It was a long time, bro. So I had to make sure I had to do what I had to do to win the game. I, that's all I wanted to do, just win the game. So my coach was like, uh, somebody have to make a play. Coming out of halftime, somebody have to make a play. It's like, all right, bet. I'm, in my mind, I'm like, that's going to be me. Like, I'm going to make that play. I'm, uh, that's going to be me. So as the kickoff, we're getting on kickoff. Uh, I'm shot out of there like a cannon, man. I'm on the left-hand side. Shot out of there like a cannon. Get down there between the 17 and the 20-yard line. Man, I dove in there, bro. Like, I, it's crazy because, like, I saw him coming. I dove and like I closed my, like it's crazy, I closed my eyes and my helmet like hit him right in his knee as his knee was lifting, my helmet hit him and like it just jacked my neck back, man. And when it jacked my neck back, bro, like everything just went dark, like everything, everything went dark. I couldn't move. Like my teammates like, deep bro, deep bro, get up, we need you, deep bro, get up. And I'm like, like in my mind, like subconsciously saying like, hey, I, I'm trying, but I can't get up, like I can't move. Like, but they can't hear me because they're like, hey, deep bro, come on, get up. And my, everything is just going in the shallow. Like everything is just going out, like I'm going out, like I'm passing, like I'm going out. And then with a few seconds, I, this bright white light, like just, whew, like just bright white light, bro. Like it's crazy. Like I'm like, I'm, I'm looking around like this room. And at first I couldn't really explain it, but now after I watch uh, Jim Carrey, uh, I wanna say Bruce Almighty uh, yeah. uh, or whatever, and they was in the room with Morgan Freeman and Jim Carrey, and he made the room just like all white. Like that's what, what I saw, man, and it, it was crazy. So I was in there for a few seconds, right? And I'm looking around, and the next thing you know, you know, my coach him come over, like I hear, like, you all right? I was like, yeah. I was like, well, let's go, get up. They put smelling salt on him, he was like, all right, well, let's go, get up. So I got up on my own power, took my helmet off, and walked off, to, I walked off the field, man. And so from what I read, then you started to feel a stinging in your neck and you told you, you yeah. called you, you called for your dad? Yeah, so I was jumping up and down on the sideline in high school. It was, at the time, it was two or three plays you had to, uh, you had to sit out. 
and uh, before you get back in. So I'm jumping up and down on the sideline. Mind you, I'm about to get my ass back in the game. I didn't know nothing was wrong with me at the time because, you know, my adrenaline going and I'm, you know, I'm a high school right. player. I had LSU scouts in the stands. I'm like, <laughs> I got the show out, dog. Right. So, um, so I'm jumping them down. Then that's when I felt this little sharp pain. I'm like, damn, I feel something. So I turn around, I immediately see my dad. I said, Dad, like I walked to my dad. I said, Dad, something wrong, like something wrong. So he sat me down. They had, I gave me ibuprofen. They put the ice on my uh, ice bag on my neck. So I'm trying to take the uh, the pills, bro. Next thing, I'm coughing. Oh, I'm trying to cough because it wouldn't go down because my disc slipped in my esophagus. So like everything in the front was messed up. So as that going on, I told my dad, I said, Dad, get the ambulance. Something is wrong. Get the ambulance right now. Something is wrong. Like, but I was so calm, cool, and collective. It was like, you know, if, if, if you know, if you know something wrong, why wasn't I panicking? Why wasn't I? It's like God, He was with me the whole time, man. And like I just told my dad, go get the ambulance. They came with the stretcher and took me to the uh, hospital. Wow. What was that like, man? Once you got to the hospital, like when they when they first told you a broken neck, right? Because I'm not I'm not a, in the medical field, but when we think of broken neck, we think people usually die, right? Like it's right. not a lot of people that I know of that break their neck and live to see another day. So when they gave you the diagnosis, were you awake or were you unconscious? Or do you remember when they first told you? Man, absolutely, man. Uh, when I got to the, um, when they put me on a stretch and I got to the ambulance, you know, the only thing I was asking about was how hard the hit was. I'm like, man, how hard the fuck it was? How hard the hit was? How hard the hit? Like, I didn't care what was going on with me. I just wanted those uh, hit of the week because I knew I had LSU scouts. I wanted to show them that I played, you know, special teams. I wanted them, you know, I, I can do multiple things besides play corner. So I get to the hospital, it was peaceful. Mind you now, I felt like I was in heaven. Now that I can talk, I felt like I was in heaven. I felt like like the angels, like the doctor, she was like taking so care, like she was being so cautious and careful. She wasn't, bro, it was like angels were with me. Like it was so perfect. It, it was nice and warm. The temperature was cool, warm. Like it was that nice, perfect temperature. Everything was right. Like it felt like I belong there. So I get to the uh, the hospital and they, they start uh, ripping my jersey up and I'm fucking like, what the fuck y'all doing? Don't fucking rip my jersey. Don't fucking rip my jersey. I got a game next week. I got a game next week. And the lady's like, no, you have to let me rip we have to get underneath and take off the shoulder pads and and we have to get it. I'm like, no, I got a game. I say, y'all gonna straight, uh, ri um, uh, stitch it back up? They're like, yeah, we're gonna do that, you know, just to tell me, whatever. Right, right. So, so I was like, all right, cool. So they took it off and, um, you know, took everything off, went, got x rays. So I'm laying in the damn bed. My mom and dad are uh, standing next to me. So I see my dad got tears and shit coming out of his eye. And I'm looking at my dad, like, you know, like, what's going on? You know, his eyes water. So the doctor walks in and he's he got the paper in his hand and he looks at me. He looks back at the paper, look at my fan. He was like, he was like, son, how how are you alive right now? And I'm like, I'm like, what you mean, doc? He was like, it was like, how how are you alive? I said, what you mean, doc? If I'm I'm talking to you, you talking to me. I'm, what you mean? I'm, I'm alive, right? Like, <laughs> right. like it was I'm crazy. Like, it's right. Like, what you mean? <laughs> he was like, son, you, you you broke your neck, son. And instantly, in my mind, I'm like, broke my neck. I'm like, no, nah, I'm talking to my mom here. I'm like, when you break your neck, you're supposed to die. It's like Superman, right? When he fell out the hall, right. you die. It's paralyzed or whatever. He's like, yeah, son, but y you're supposed to be dead on that field. Like, there's no way you you alive right now. I'm like, wait, what? And he put the x-ray up on the thing. He showed me everything. He was like, he showed me everything. And then he had this, uh, the bone that was uh, leaning, had a bone chip from, the, from my neck was leaning on my artery, the main artery to my, ve the main vessel to my artery uh, on my brainstem, right? So it was leaning on that. He said, if I'd have made one move, I'd have been dead. I'd have been dead right there. But I, I, I said, doc, I took my helmet off two or three times. What you mean? Wow. Think about it. I took my helmet off two or three times. If I was supposed to be dead, if that bone was supposed to be punctured right there on immediate contact, and I got up, walked off the field, took my helmet off twice. Come on, man. You tell me. And that's a, well, how old were you? 17? Uh, 17, man. Said, bro, I just turned 17 two days after my 17th birthday, man. I just turned 17, man. Come on. So the way that you explained it, were you uh, heavily into spiritual life at mm -hmm. that at 17? No. So you explained it a lot, thing. like from a spiritual point of view. Yeah. That makes sense? Like as grown up, we could say that now. But I read that that experience allowed you to become saved and get a little closer to God. So yes. Was that traumatic experience something that led you a little closer to God? Yes, absolutely. That's my, that's my savior. That's my savior. And I, I, I want to continue to keep doing his work. Um, and that's why I say 
it's time for me to tell my story. It's time for me to, um, you know, show him, you know, show people what, what he's done for me, you know, because a lot of people are like, oh, I've never heard that story. I, I want to show you. I want to, and God's going to do it on his timing, right? And and I know his time. I feel his timing. Um, and, and like I said, I'm, I'm just thankful. Um, I even got um, baptized um, May of 2007, man, um, you know, just because of that traumatic experience, it showed me that I need to get closer to God because I was doing bad shit, man. I really was, uh, I was bad. Like, I was a habitual liar. Like, I would just lie for nothing. I was still, like, I, I would do, I was doing bad shit. And, you know, it, it, it but I was a kid, you know, right. a, a whole bunch of kids do bad, dumb shit. But, um, but but to endure the pain that I did and to have uh, me break my neck, that was just too, that was over the, that was over the top for me, man. But God had a way. God was like, I got you. I showed you like, I showed you the way. Come to me. If you come to me, I'm going to guide you. And that's what I did. I went and got baptized May of 2007. And man, my life has been clean since then. That's beautiful, man. Uh, real quick. How long was the recovery? So how long did you stay in the hospital after you broke, the, broke your neck? Uh, I was in there for a month. I want to say about a month. And, um, you know, it took me, uh, they told me it was going to take me uh, at least some while to learn how to walk again. You know, I had uh, numbness and tingling in my uh, lower proximities. And, um, and and I was like, take me. Like, Man, no. I'm like, no. I said, give me five days. I, I, I'll be back walking in five days. Man, it took me three three days, man, and that's God through prayer and everything, man, God, I, I was back walking, everything was back to normal, I was back walking, and the doctor was like, wow, like, you a fast healer, and I'm like, hmm, you know, so, and I went from there, man, and the doctor told me when I was getting discharged, um, I asked him, was football ever out of the question, was it over with for me, and he, he was walking out the door, he turned back, he was like, send me Super Bowl tickets when you make it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> And, you know, I kept that momentum, I kept that inspiration and that motivation, and uh, that, that would kept me going. Man, that's, a, that's an amazing story. So now, scouts were at the game, right? You're projected to be a, a, a top recruit going into college, man, but because of the injury, that didn't happen. So what was that journey like, finding your way to the next step? Like, were you disappointed that you wouldn't be able to attend college like that? Man, you know, it, 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 it sucked, but God always make a way. You know, um, when I got this charge, um, Les Miles called me that night and uh, told me they was going to honor my scholarship. So, you know, it was pretty dope, right? So I wasn't even thinking of a, you know, of a long path of not going to college or anything because I'm like, man, I still have a full ride. Like, I still can go there and enjoy myself, maybe get cleared and, and possibly play as an LSU Tiger. Who knows? So when he did that, man, it, 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 the light clicked on. I'm like, man, I still have opportunity. Doctor told me to send him Super Bowl tickets when I make it to the Super Bowl, so my time is it's not over with. So I'm gonna keep going until it's time. Got to LSU, um, they didn't clear me, man, and that's when everything set in as far as the dark spaces and depression, anxiety, PTSD, everything. So it's just crazy. It's me that's creeping through the bag with the black on black, the soldier with the Mac. I bust back till he crack. I got the chop in my hand with the clip in the ass. It go to spitting and make a movie, so you better get back. You see.